Hey guys, this is Gatsby with Tape, and today you join me for another Subscriber Designs video, and we start again with a VTOL, because I kind of requested last time that people send me VTOLs, because I like seeing if I can hover, hover them and land them on the VAB, and last time someone sent me a giant one. But anyway, yes, so this is from um, Anders, or Galaxa, I don't want to say his second name, but you know he, uh, from Anders... Uh, I don't want to, yeah, second names, not a great idea. Anyway, so yeah, this is a little VTOL. It's pretty cool. When you hit this button, it opens up the cargo bay, and the VTOL engines are actually nine little Juno engines, which is really cool, because usually it's like one after burning engine, but this is this is some initiative. I like this. So we're going to take this off, and we're just going to go fly it over there and land on the VAB. It's overall pretty cool. It's got some swept wings. It's got, like, double canards. They're, like, interestingly placed and all of that. But the main thing is that it's VTOL, and I can try to land it on the VAB. So, yeah, let's get on over there. It's pretty easy to control, actually. Um, it's pretty nice. It's got, like, some... Oh, shit. Oh, no, I'm going too fast. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's got... Oh, I thought these were control surfaces, but they're just there to, like, balance things out. But, yeah, it does control pretty well. Um... Okay, I'm slowing down. Okay, I'm going to have to stop talking about the plane right now and start focusing on landing because that is super important that I land on the VAB. It is the most important thing in the world. Um, Alright, because landing on the VAB is the test of a good pilot, the test of a good plane, and generally just a fun thing to do in KSP. Um, and not super easy. I think someone did send me something to try and land on the top of the VAB that wasn't a VTOL, and I might try that next time, but this time I was like, ah, I'm going to stick to VTOLs. But yeah, okay, so we want to move forward a little bit. Um, who? We want to throttle up. We're going too, we're going too fast. We're coming in hot. Coming in hot! Oh god! Okay. Okay. I'm going to rotate it this way. Make it line up a little better. Oh, oh. Oh, I'm losing a little control. I should seriously, I should have been a Harrier pilot. Um, although I think they retired the Harrier in the Britain in Britain long before I was of age. Um, I'm gonna get some of those fancy new F-35s though, maybe unless Trump cancels them, because he was like, I'm gonna cancel them. I was like, yeah, ordinarily kind of a good idea, but like we we sort of need those, man. We built these aircraft carriers. We we need those F-35s, dude. Don't don't f don't fuck with it, man. Uh, well, we actually don't need them, but we've built the aircraft carrier, so we should, probably should get them. Um, but, you know, carriers are sort of useless when you're fighting terrorists. Um, but what do I know? Anyway, let's uh, land on the VAB, and then, yeah, ha boom Oh! Oh, victory for Vegeta! Look at that shit! Look at how great that is. Ha! Huh. Thank you! So, thank you to Anders. Um, that's, uh... Uh, it's a good little VTOL, and I landed it, it's probably my cleanest landing yet. But anyway, let's move on to someone else. So the next thing we're looking at is a craft called the Spayfish from Felix. And it's an interesting looking craft, it looks a little like a pod racer from that terrible film with that scene that everyone seems to think is amazing and it's kind of okay I guess, but anyway, let's not start a Star Wars war. Um, this uses these giant Goliath turbofan engines at the front to pull um, the plane forward. It doesn't have a huge wing surface, um, because I guess that would increase drag, and it also probably has quite a lot of body lift from this. But it does fly pretty well. Um, and it flies very fast, that's the main thing. Um, it also yaws quite well. It's got a lot of yaw surfaces. If you're going quite slowly, you can yaw quite well, I think, with it. Um, I did fly this before. Yeah, so you can yaw. I, I like it when you can yaw instead of normal turning. It's, it's interesting. But when you get to up to speed, you don't want to do that. You'll freak out. But yeah, you can see that it's just climbing in velocity ridiculously. It's not like a sleek fighter jet or anything. It is just raw power, full-on speed. I love it. It's the best way to go really fast. You don't want your fancy, your fancy, smancy after-burning engines or your ramjet engines. You just want two giant ass full thrust to, like jumbo jet engines on front of a small plane, and that'll get you where you need to go. Um, so I'm going to fly it right at this. Now, I'm pretty sure these are going to explode. Something's going to explode. Something's overheating. Probably these atmospheric fluid spectrovariometers. I don't care what those are. Those aren't engines. Um, yeah, so this is this is going pretty well. It actually can get up to about 500 meters per second, and it probably will. What are we going to lose? Do you, oh, yeah, there it goes. There goes the atmospheric scanner and the bloops. Um, Scanama bloops? Okay, that's new. Anyway, as you can see, you're going to get about, about 500 meters per second, and then we're probably going to hit this cliff. But it's cool, because I'll dodge out of the way with my sick dodging skills. Um, 
And dodge, because it's... Oh my god. Yeah, that was maybe... Yeah, that was not the smartest move in hindsight. Uh, <laughs> I pulled a little hard. In actuality... Oh, this looks weird now. I haven't been here in a while. What the dickens? Why does it have a border? That's dumb. Anyway. Yeah, in actuality, is what I was going to say, is it's a pretty maneuverable plane. It's not like super crazy maneuverable, but it's surprisingly maneuverable for how small its wings are. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. I thought I would pull up at the last second, but I was traveling almost Mark two, so not a great idea. Um, it does tend to fall apart as you fly. I've had lots of things fall off it when I was flying it around and testing, or overheat from the giant engines. Um, so, you know, you probably won't arrive back home with your whole plane, but yeah, that's not why you fly this. You fly it to get somewhere really fast, and you know, it's great. And it's also got this little thruster here. I don't know if that's useful in any way. Maybe it's just good for taking off, but uh, yeah. But yeah, you can see it's, it's, it's maneuverable enough. It's, it's okay. It's pretty good. It's got a little red light there, and that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. Anyway, this is pretty cool. So thank you to Felix. I did enjoy this very much. And uh, let's move on to someone else. So yes, the next thing we're looking at is the Y1411 from um, Rockets Don't Make Good Toast, which is true, and very deep of you. Rockets do not make good toast. Um, and yeah, this is just a giant ass plane with huge wings, and it's pretty cool actually. So we'll take off, we'll fire up the engines. I think there's a button to fire up the afterburner on this, like that. No, that turns it off. Well, I'll just activate it manually. Toggle mode. There we go. And that'll give it some extra speed. So it's using these uh, four Goliath engines, the same ones that were on the last little plane. It also has a couple little rocket engines here. I don't know if they'd be that useful, but maybe I'll fire them off at some point. But yeah, it just has giant wings. It's got some pretty giant tail planes, so it can yaw pretty well. Yeah, it can almost do my fun yaw thing where I just yaw around. But yeah. Um, and then just really huge other wings, so it can glide for pretty much ever. Like if I shut down my engines kind of here, it's still gonna, it's just gonna glide for, for ages. If we just leave that, I could go make a coffee, it'd probably still be flying without its engines. I like it. It's, I love stuff when it just has crazy big wings. In reality, probably not actually that big wings for an aircraft. I mean... Aircraft have pretty big wings. We make our wings too small in KSP. I mean, I know I do. Um, tailplane's probably a little big. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. You can just see that it will just sort of glide for ages. It's still actually gaining altitude. If we time warp a bit, it's just gonna... It's gonna fly, you know? It doesn't even need thrust, man. And I really like it. It's got a good cross-range capability. It'd probably have a good altitude ceiling. Would make a pretty good bomber. But it's actually a passenger jet, right? And then there's also a cargo bay. There's nothing in there, but you could put something in there. Um, yeah, still flying. It's 100 meters per second, which is actually pretty fast. It's like 250 miles per hour. Um, it's 90 meters per second. Still flying pretty well. Starting to slow down a lot, but oh yeah, if you time warp too much, it'll just sort of flex. But yeah, you can see it's really good at gliding. And because it has big wings, you can do fun stuff. Like uh, fly really close to the ground, or the water in this case maybe strip off some wings. So let's see if it can fly without large sections of its wings. Because that's the fun thing when you have like a huge amount of wings and engines is see what, how much can fail before it all just falls apart. So like when you build a rocket with like loads of engines, how many of those can flame out before, um, before it won't fly straight anymore? Or uh, how much wing can you rip off a giant uh, passenger plane loaded with kerbals? So hopefully it can or all these kerbals are gonna die. Um, yeah. Okay, all right, okay. We're gonna bring it down to the water. We're just gonna glance one of the bits of wing off and see if it still flies. Uh, there goes, oh, almost got some, but I pulled 15 Gs. Did you see that? Every time you pull anything in this, it's pretty insane. Okay, we're gonna try again. I, 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 I pussied out, I'm a bitch. I bitched out of that. Um, but we're gonna go back in, we're gonna take off some of this wing. It's gonna be great. I'm gonna spiral in. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna, gonna, come on, come on. Okay, uh, oh, oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm being too, I'm be, I'm, I'm too scared, but I know I can do this. Okay, let's just take off some wing. Okay, there it goes, there it goes. Oh my god, we lost some tailplane. Oh, we lost all of the tailplane. Okay, so I actually did test this, and I only lost one piece of tailplane, and it continued to fly. But apparently, if you use both, both play, piece, ah, both tail planes, 
you sort of fail. Anyway, that was kind of fun. It landed safely. Some of the passengers survived. Let's move on to the final thing, which is pretty cool. So the final thing we're looking at today is from Valtteri, or Valtteri? I don't know, I know you've sent me stuff before, and I know I've messed your name up before, so I'm sorry, but this, this is pretty cool. This is a MiG-29 Fulcrum, which is a Russian fighter jet, one of the most, uh, probably the most produced Russian fighter jets, and kind of the classic look with the raised um, cockpit and the very kind of flat back. It just looks, it looks really cool, and this is one of my very, one of my favorite fighter jets. And uh, yeah, so I'm very happy to have one of these sent to me. I think I looked at, took a look at his SU-27 before, which is quite similar. But anyway, so what are we going to do with this? Well, we're going to throw it up against an F-15 Eagle over there, which was featured in the last episode, but didn't really get to do any dogfighting. So we're going to do that right now. We're going to have a bit of a have a bit of a fight. Um, uh, so yeah, we're going to take off. I'm probably going to drop the droppable fuel tank straight away. Um, is one of these, does one of these buttons switch these to wet mode? Okay, that's that. Okay, so, let's get in the air. <laughs> um, that, uh, that's loaded with two sidewinders and, and, and two, uh, no, four sidewinders and two amrams. This is loaded with um, four amrams and four sidewinders. So I have a missile advantage, but I'm obviously going to go for guns, because I like using guns. Guns are fun. Um, well, you know, on planes. Uh, okay, so he goes over the top of me. And then, oh my god, oh, he's coming around. <laughs> that was so close. I wonder if uh, BD Armor is going to give me the aim box today. Probably, hopefully. Probably not. It's not looking like it, no. Um, oh, I just totally fucked up that control. I wish I had mouse, mouse aim flight mod. That would really help. Now, the F-15 is hugely faster than me because it's using technically four engines, whereas this is using two. Um, because the four, it's got uh, four engines kind of all merged into each other. Um... Oh, get under him because he's gonna shoot me. Um, I'm not sure which is more maneuverable. This is definitely smaller and lighter, so I'm hoping that gives me a little bit of an edge on the F-15. Now the F-15 and the MiG-29, I think it was the MiG-29 or maybe the SU-27, did actually come into conflict in the Iraq War. Um, well, not the Iraq War, it was Operation Desert Storm, the first kind of invasion of Iraq. Um, F-15s flew in, you know, to take out ground targets and take out enemy fighters, and a lot of the enemy fighters were were MiG-29s, or SU-27, so they did come into contact, but the superiority mostly of the American pilots, because they were better trained than the Iraqi pilots, um, led to a huge numbers of victories by the F-15, and the F-15 has become the most successful fighter jet in the world, largely because of that conflict. Um, I mean, the MiGs were all pretty much taken down within a matter of days, uh, but that was just because of the kind of superiority of the American forces, really, I believe. Um, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, my God, I've lost control of the plane. Oh, I flipped it around the wrong way. Okay, this is a little bit too rolly, I think. Um, I might turn off one of the control surfaces because I'm having a little trouble. Oh, that was the worst shot ever. Hopefully, it'll take him down. Uh, of course it will. I didn't put any chaff on there. <laughs> there he goes. Totally taken down. I should have put some chaff or flares on there, but I totally didn't think about it because that was sent to me unarmed. Um, but yeah, there it goes. Unlike real conflicts, um, the MiG-29 is victorious. I'm not sure if um, the, I think the MiG-29 is possibly a better plane than the F-15, but I'm not really sure. It was just a matter of the pilots in Desert Storm. Yeah, so anyway, that's done. I would have liked to have a slightly better dogfight, but I dogfight all the time in all of my series. Um, so yeah, but I am going to hopefully sometime this week or next um, do a video with some of their craft I looked at last time. If you remember, I did some sci-fi fighter jets and had that F-15 and now have this MiG-29. So I'd like to put up some modern day fighter jets against some sci-fi futuristic fighters and see what happens, because I think that would be really cool. Um, I think there is a button to drop this fuel tank. Oh, that breaks. There we go. Oh, it kind of just exploded. But whatever. Yeah, I think that would be really cool. It will be with the uh, craft that were designed, but it would be kind of a follow-up to that video, um, because I didn't really put them against each other, which was super lame of me. Uh, but anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have craft you want to send in to me, you can send them to gamingwithtape at gmail.com, which is in the description. Um, make sure you just include the uh, the list of mods and the version of KSP. I usually assume it's KSP 1.2. Um, but if not, I have all of the versions, pretty much, that I can just, you know, test it in. So we could uh, totally get that going. And yeah. 
But this is the end of the video, and if you'd like to go check out a couple more videos, there's my latest episode of Prison Architect, in which, like, 17 people die. It's, it's ridiculous. There's just, ugh, it gets really out of hand. There's also my latest episode of Road to Colonization, in which we do some cool little Duna repairs on the base, and go to the moon, and Ike, and it's just a bunch of fun, so you should check that out as well. There's also links to my Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon in the description, if you're interested. But as always, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been Caspi with Tape. I'll see you next time.